Good day guys, we are still busy with manufacturing accounts. Before we're going to do bike size, I want to tell you one thing. I miss you very, very much. I wish, and I really wish, that we could have had contact classes. And hopefully, we will see each other in the second semester at some stage again. Now, bikes are us, they tell us to ignore that. Bikes are us, a manufacturer and sells plastic bikes for children aged 2 to 6 years old. All these bikes are made out of plastic, which are molded into different sizes in the manufacturing plant. The company makes use of a perpetual inventory system, important, and the accounting policy is to use the first in, first out method for the valuation of direct materials. Very important. And then furthermore, the weighted average method for the valuation of working process and um, finished goods. In this question, it is of paramount importance that you are noting exactly how, what you should do in valuing your closing inventory and your cost of sales when it's finished goods or the cost of direct material issued if it was direct material. Let me give you the following information for the financial year ending 31 March 2017. They give you additional information. And in the required part, A, prepare the general ledger accounts for raw materials, work in progress, finished goods, the allowance for unrealized profit account shown in the statement of financial position, and the unrealized profit account that will be closed off against the profit or loss account. So both the unrealized profit accounts the one, the statement of financial position account, and the other one, that's the account that we close off against the cost of sales. And then in the B part, present the inventory in the notes to the statement of financial position as of 31 March in accordance with international financial reporting standards. Comparative figures and the accounting policy note are not required. Guys, if they tell you that, please don't waste your time to write things that is not required from you. Okay, under the additional information, which is important, is that Bow transfers finished goods from the manufacturing plant to the sales department at a profit ratio of 10% on the total manufacturing cost. So that's our unrealized profit that the factory is going to add to the actual cost of manufacturing when they transfer the finished or the completed goods to the sales department. And then in the sales department, they are going to add a 30% markup to this blown up price, the inflated price of the 110% in other words, in order to determine the selling price of the motorbikes. Good. So we're going to start up. We're going to open up all the general ledger accounts. It's the one from us, raw materials, work in progress, finished goods, the allowance for unrealized profit account. And then also with uh, manufacturing accounts, you're probably going to need an overhead account. Although they don't ask it, you have to accumulate the overhead costs in a certain account. So therefore, you're going to open up an overhead account as well. Where do we take the balance of the overhead account to? to the working process account at the end of the day. Right, now, I've told you before when we've done inventory, as soon as you see units, see units, then please guys make use of the table format in order to calculate your whatever calculations is required. Can you see that we are working here with units all the time? Now, in manufacturing accounts, you can either do this calculation within your GL account, but then you have to do it very tidy or neatly, or else you can do the little table underneath, which probably is going to be the best way to do that, and then just insert the final answer of your table in the applicable spots. Good. We are going to open up raw materials. We had 66,000 rand of raw materials. It was 33,000 kgs. So therefore, it's easy to work out that per kg, the cost was 2 rand. 33,000 kgs times 2 rand per kg gives us 66,000 rand. So when we open up our raw material account, opening balance 66,000. And now, what do we have to value it at the first in, first out method? 
So in our little table here, we will also say raw materials, opening inventory, 33,000 kgs, total rand value 66,000, so our cost per unit, 2 rand per unit. And as we're going to go along, you will see why it is so important that we keep track of the unit costs. Work in progress had an opening balance of 32,800. So in our work in progress account, opening balance 32,800 rand. Finished goods, there were 600 units. And now what is important here, they tell you that the following information pertaining to the company's manufacturing accounts. So if they talk about manufacturing accounts, finished goods then will be the account finished goods in the GL. And the account finished goods in the GL will include unrealized profit. So that will be the actual account balance, 600 units, and the total value, 105,600. So again, if we're going to work out here a unit price, which is important in this question, you will see that the unit price equals 176 rand per kg, or per unit, per unit. Now, for the valuation of work in progress and finished goods, we have to use the weighted average method. So finished goods opening balance 105,600 in our finished goods account opening balance 105,600. We have seen that they transfer finished goods from the manufacturing plant to the selling department at a profit ratio of 10%. So included in that 105,600 is our unrealized profit component of 10%. So we are also able to start off our opening balance or calculate our opening balance in our allowance for unrealized profit account. Our opening balance was 105,600. Included there was 10% unrealized profit. So times 10 divided by 110 gives us an opening balance on our allowance for unrealized profit of 9,600. Good. We have purchased raw materials, 360,000 kgs, or 792,000 rand. Remember, we ignore that in this question. So in our raw materials account, purchases or creditors, 792,000. But in our little table, we have to keep track of unit costs, because here we work first in, first out. So purchases, 360,000 kgs. Total cost 792,000, and if I get the unit cost, i.e. 792 divided by 360,000, it gives us 220 per unit. Good. Total labor costs, note number one, 920,000. Only 8% of the total labor cost paid is attributable to selling and administrative staff members. So what are we going to take to our manufacturing costs? We're going to take the remaining 92%, 2%. Of that amount of 920,000, which gives us 846,400, and that we are going to post to our what account? Work in progress account. It would have gone to our direct labor account first, and then we would have closed off our direct labor account to our work in process account. They don't ask direct labor account, they only want work in process. So therefore here, uh, labor, 920,000 times 92%, 846,400 rand. Then electricity depreciation and other factory costs. Now, I would have preferred if you took it to an overhead account first, but you will see that in the solution, they took all these individual costs to your uh, work in process account. It would not have been marked incorrectly because in total it would have lied in that account. But if you have accumulated all this type of cost in the overhead account first and then transferred the total amount of the overhead account to work in progress, that technically speaking is the 100% correct way of doing it. Now electricity, note number two, only 5% of the electricity is utilized by the plant in the manufacturing process. So therefore, the only cost that will be included in our um, cost of manufacturing is going to be 85%. So 85% of that amount of 180,000 gives us 153,000. So either in your overhead account or in this case in the, uh, in the working process account, 
only the 153,000 would have been uh, taken been taken into account in our OVED or our working process account. Um, like I say, if it was in the OVED account, you would have accumulated electricity, depreciation and other factory OVEDs in the OVED account and then only transferred to work in progress one single amount, which will be the sum total of them all. Good. So there it is, electricity, 153,000. Guys, what are we going to do? Our total electricity cost was 180,000. What about the rest? We have now counted for 153,000. But what of the remaining, what is that, 17, 27,000 rand? That remaining 27,000 rand will be shown as an operating cost in the statement of profit or loss. So that the other 27,000 is a normal expense in your income statement, 27,000 rand. So we still are going to account for the 480,000, of which 153,000 rand will form part of the cost of the goods manufactured, and the remaining 27,000 will form part of our normal operating costs. Right, depreciation. Note number three. Note number three says that 90% of the depreciation charge relates to the machinery used in the manufacturing plant. So therefore, we are still going, we only going to take 90% 90, 90 of that total charge to our overheads or either or work in progress account, which is 297,000 rand. So what are we going to do with the 297,000? That will go to work in progress. What are we going to do with the remaining amount, i.e. the 330,000 less the 297,000? Guys, that will be the depreciation charge in the income statement, the difference between the two. What is that? 33,000 Rand. So 33,000 Rand will go as a depreciation charge in my income statement, whereas 297,000 Rand will go to my work in progress or my overheads account, and there it is, 297,000 Rand. Right, other factory overhead costs, either to my overhead cost, and then in this case, they took it directly to our work in progress account, 240600, so that is in a work in progress account, 240600. Good. Now we've dealt with the additional information, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. They gave it to us, and we don't use actually 5 in this question, but I could very easily have added the question and says, do the um, very easily, and I would love to do that to ask you what was the gross profit or to do the gross profit section of the income statement where you're going to add this 30% to the total cost of goods sold, so cost of sales, and that would have been the inflated cost of sales as in my finished goods account in order to determine the selling price. Cost of sales would have been the amount that I'm going to determine in my finished goods account less my unrealized profit P&L account balance. And that would have been my cost of sales amount. Right, at the end of the period, we still had 38,000 kgs of plastic on hand with a big question mark. So, what is missing in our raw material account? We only have the opening balance and the purchases. Then they tell us, well, we have 38,000 kgs on hand at the end of the year. Remember, we work first in, first out. So if we have 38,000 kgs available at the end of the year, we are going to value that at the latest purchase price of 2.20 per kg. So our closing inventory will then be 38,000 multiplied by 2.20, which gives us 83,600. So closing balance there, 83,600. Now, we can work out the direct material issued into work in progress as a balancing figure, but I would strongly recommend that you test yourself whether that figure that you've calculated there as the balancing figure is actually correct. So if you think about first in, first out, what would we have issued firstly into the production process? The first ones that we would have issued is that 66,000, that 33,000 kgs. So 66,000 would have been issued first. So cost of uh, material issued, the first 66,000 would have been our opening balance. Now we have to then determine how much kgs 
have we actually issued? We had 33,000 kgs on hand at the, at the beginning of the period. We have purchased 360,000 kgs, so we had available to issue a total of 393,000 kgs. We still have on hand at the end of the period 38,000 kgs. So that means that we have actually issued during the year a total of 355,000 kgs. The first 33,000 of that 355,000 was costed 66,000 rand. So the remaining amount, so what is that, 322,000, 355, less 33,000, the remaining 322,000 kgs that we issued was at the second price, the latest price of 2 rand 20 per kg. And that gave us a total then of 708,400. Now, if we add the 66,000 to the 708,400, that gives us a total of 774,400, and which is also equal to the balancing figure there. So the cost price of raw material issued into the production process was 777,400, 774,400. I have actually now... Um, tested myself and I'm happy with my amount. So that 77400 will go and work in progress and in my work in progress account raw material then 774400. In my work in progress account I can also finish that off. I have my opening balance, I have my direct material, I have all my overheads, I have my direct labour. So in total, they also give us a closing balance of my work in progress account. Work in progress at the end of the day, 40,200. So if that was 40,200, it means that the balancing figure here, closing balance, the balancing figure here was the actual cost of completed goods for the year. So when I work out the 2304,000, I'm going to transfer that amount to my actual finished goods account. 2304,000. Now, the question says when we transfer goods from the factory to the sales department, we add a 10% manufacturing unrealized profit. So, if the actual cost of manufacturing was 2304,000 and that was the actual cost that we transferred to our finished goods account, we still have to add the 10% of that amount which we are going to post to the unrealized profit p and l account so 10 percent of the 234,000 gives us 230,400 we will debit the finished goods account and we're going to create the unrealized profit profit and loss account with the amount of 230,400 now we have a slight problem here because finished goods so the only thing that we know is that we have on hand at the end of the period 700 units. I don't have a cost associated with that. Also, they tell us that we have sold 20,000 units in the current period. So that 20,000 uh, units that we've sold, well, we have to use it in order to determine how many units were manufactured in the current financial period. We had 600 units in the beginning. We have at the end 700 units and we have sold 20,000 units. So there's only one missing link. We had in the beginning 600 units. We have uh, sold 20,000 units. We have closing inventory of 700 units. So that means the balancing figure is then we have manufactured 20,100 units. Um, I think I've put it differently somewhere else. But, yeah, that 20,100, we said we had 600 units. Let's write it in here for you. If we want to do it simple and plain, we said we had 600 units at the beginning of the year. We don't know how much we have manufactured. But we know that we have sold 20,000 units and we know that the answer at the end of the day equals 700 units. And then if we resolve X then, you will see that we have manufactured 20,100 units for the period. Now, why is that important? 
Guys, that is important because we have to value our closing inventory and we have to value our cost of sales because that is the two missing figures in my finished goods account. So let's start then and let's determine what, what, how many units and the cost associated to those units that we have which was available to sell in the current period. So we had 600 units, the cost was 105,600. We manufactured 20,100 units and the cost there was these two together, 2,304,000 2, plus 230,400. So that then gives us the 105,000 for the 600, for the 20,100, 2,534,400. Four so in total, we had available to sell 20,700 units with a total cost of 2,640,000. Oh, what is our average price per unit? Our average price per unit is 2,640 oh, divided by 20,700. And that equals 127.54. So that is our weighted average cost. 2640, the total amount of goods available to be sold, divided by the total number of goods available to be sold, 20,600, 127.400. Now we know, and they told us, we have 700 units on hand at year end. So 700 units, and now we've calculated the weighted average cost per unit. So if you're going to multiply 700, multiplied by 127,400, that is going to give us our closing uh, value of 89,278. 89,278. And then we can calculate our cost of sales as the balancing figure in this account, and that is 2550722. However, I would strongly recommend that you do a test and make sure that this is actually correct. So what is the cost of sales? That was 20,000 units we've sold. At what? The average cost price of 127.54. And if you're going to work that out, that is going to bring you back to the total cost of sales of 2550722. Yeah, oh, I haven't done it there. That is 2550722. Good. Now, if we have the closing value of our finished goods, we can work out the closing balance of our allowance for unrealized profit account. So our closing balance is 89278. You can clearly see that all the accounts here, all the numbers here, is a blown up figure. It's an unrealized profit inclusive figure. So that 89 to 78 also includes this 10% unrealized profit. So in our allowance for unrealized profit, what do we want the closing balance to be? The closing balance, 89 to 78, 89 to 78, Multiply by 10 divided by 110, and that gives us a closing balance of 8116. Remember, we're going to bring over the balance there and bring down the balance here on the credit side of 8116. Good. Not the balance. Right. Now, what do we need in our allowance for unrealized profit account? To derive at a closing balance of 8116. We had an opening balance of 9600. We want that balance to be 8116 now. That means we're going to need a debit on this account of 1484. So 1484 is going to be credited then to our unrealized PL account, 1484. And then the total balance of our unrealized PL account is going to be transferred to our cost of sales account which is going to be the 231884. Now, let's assume that I ask you the income statement, the gross profit section of the income statement. What would our sales amount have come to? Our sales amount would have been 2550722 
and we're going to add a question uh, according to the question a markup percentage of 30 percent is added by the selling department on the inflated cost of finished goods received by them from the manufacturing plant to determine the selling price of these little motorbikes so in other words our selling price would have been 2550 uh, multiplied by 1.3 and that gives us 3315939 now what would cost of sales have been cost of sales would have been that amount of 2550722 minus our unrealized profit P&L account. And we've worked that one out when we balance off this account, 231884. 231, So what would our actual cost of sales have been? Our actual cost of sales would have been 2550722 less 2318.84, which gives us a total of 2318.838. Therefore, what would our gross profit have been? Difference between our sales and our cost of sales. And that would have been uh, less, 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 So very important that you also know how to calculate this because probably I would love to ask you the income statement with a gross profit section only the gross and maybe the rest as well because then if i ask you the rest i can test whether you know that the rest of depreciation is actually a normal operating cost the rest of electricity is a normal operating cost the rest of labor is a normal operating cost so that i can test whether you in your mind have a clear distinction of which cost is going to be taken to what part of the income statement you can see that this eventually forms part of my cost of sales. Do you see that? Because cost of sales has been based on those costs. So therefore, the other cost, the that cost element is in my income statement if I have sold that item. Right, if I haven't sold the item, where's that cost element then? Then it's part of my closing balance. Closing balance of raw material, closing balance of work in process, or whatever. The second part of the question wants the inventory note from you. Now, they don't want the accounting policy note, so therefore they only want to do, I'm going to do that test now with you, they only want a disclosure. So you're going to say bikes are sp 2 i limited, extract from the notes to the financial statements for the year ended 31 March 2017, 2017 Rand. Finished goods, and you'll go to your finished goods account, not 89 to 78 guys because that in that's not the actual cost price of the goods that includes the unrealized profit so you're going to take the 89 to 78 and you're going to deduct the 8116 and in my note i'm only going to show the net amount of 81162 then work in progress the closing balance there was 40,200 there it is 40,200 and the raw materials in my raw material account the closing balance there was 83,600 so I'm going to show the 83,600 and in total then the 204,962 and that 204,962 would have been the value of inventory as shown on the face of my statement of financial position now we have done cost of sales yeah where did i insert that now yeah yeah we have worked out cost of sales is 2318838 actually for the year after we have taken out our unrealized pnl account you can check yourself guys 
you can start and say, well, let's say that there was no such thing as an unrealized profit element in this question. So what would my opening balance have been of my finished goods? That would have been the 105,600 less than 9,600. And that gives us 96,000. What was the actual cost of goods manufactured? It was only the 2304,000. So there we have cost of goods manufactured 2304,000. Now remember cost of sales opening inventory plus now manufactured this clo closing inventory. Now closing inventory was my 89,278 less the closing balance of my unrealized p and account, 8116. So if I deduct that, the actual cost price of goods, 81,162. And that gives us also cost of sales of 2318,838. It is 2318,838, and there we've calculated that, 2318,838. So you know that everything in this question is in balance, and everything is correct. This is actually very nice questions because this is also the one thing flows to the next, flows to the next, flows to the next. What you should watch out for in this question is your valuation methods. Your value, or your weighted average cost method, you should have been known exactly how to calculate weighted average cost. And then where raw material is concerned, you should have known exactly how to value first in first out in order to derive at work in progress and closing balance.